This is an incongruous search for people accused of digital dark arts in British elections, but who live in rural Canada. Imagine being in Britain and being told that a Canadian election was swayed by a company in Torquay. Searching for the bosses of a tiny data company on Vancouver Island, but who boast of changing the course of world history. Jeff gets up and says, we destroyed the European Union. What are we going to do next? People who combined laid back Canadian country living with, according to the campaign director of Vote Leave at the time. What are we doing? Take me back your soul! Playing a pivotal role in the referendum that changed everything, Brexit. We wanted to hear AIQ's story directly from its bosses. The company was set up five years ago in British Columbia. There was a lot we wanted to talk to them about. Not least, this. The official Brexit campaign group's testimonial on the AIQ website, subsequently removed, said that the referendum wouldn't have been won without this tiny company in the Canadian backwaters. Brexit campaign group spent £3.5 million on AIQ. So, the question is... Exactly what did AIQ do for that money? And exactly who did they do it for? AIQ used data to micro-target voters with tailored messages. Or, as the campaign director of Vote Leave explained... We aimed it at, I can't remember exactly, but I think roughly about 7 million people. 1.5 billion um, digital ads. Let's start with the AIQ bosses. Jeff Sylvester worked for Justin Trudeau's party, tech savvy and a scout leader. And Zach Massingham, ex-business school administrator, worked for the provincial Liberals, lives near a little place called Kawashan Bay. We've reached out to him several times asking for specific answers to specific questions. We've got partial answers, so we're here to try and talk to him again. When we knocked on his door, we were told he wasn't in. His wife didn't know when he'd be back. I've reached the voice box of... Zach Massingham. Hi, it's Jeff Sylvester. Please leave a message after the tone. Give me a quick call um, when you have a moment. And thus began four days of being given the runaround in a very polite Canadian sort of way. If you have, guys have loads around, of, you'll figure it out. Have loads of journalists been looking for them? Oh, I don't think so. You're the only two. <laughs> <laughs> when we went to the address we had for them in Victoria, turns out they'd left it two months ago. The company is also being investigated by the British Columbian Information and Privacy Commissioner over concerns that people's personal information is being used without their consent, something AIQ denies. What are you specifically concerned about when it comes to AIQ? Well, in British Columbia, you can't collect a person's information, with, except in very limited circumstance, without their consent. So you have to define what the purposes are and how you're going to use it and disclose it. And so we want to find out if Aggregate IQ was collecting any personal information, and if they did, how did they handle that? Who did they disclose it to? The idyllic Canadian backdrop, not the only AIQ contradiction. The bosses and staff were liberals. Many of their clients were not. And according to one ex-employee, when it came to pumping out material online, there was a lot of holding your nose. It's like Catholics going door to door and preaching for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Stuart Morris worked for the company for four months in 2016. Zach was talking to one of the guys who was writing uh, a script and he was like having trouble and he was saying, oh, you know, I, I don't want to say this, uh, I don't want to say that. And Zach says, okay, this is for a very right wing can candidate. Uh, if it makes you cringe, it's good. Mr. Massingham denies saying this, but that's not the only reason we want to talk to AIQ. The whistleblower Shamir Sani, who worked for the pro-Brexit Believe campaign, says that Vote Leave used Believe to funnel money to AIQ, and thus Vote Leave avoided going over referendum spending limits. Of Vote Leave, he said... They used Believe to overspend, and not just by a small amount. Almost two-thirds of a million pounds makes all the difference and it wasn't legal. 
His partner in Believe, Darren Grimes, denies this, as does Vote Leave. AIQ say they weren't aware of any attempt to get around the law. In Victoria, opposite the Parliament buildings, we visited AIQ's solicitor. It turns out that Sylvester and Massingham are not the only shareholders in this company. There are also three other minority shareholders, two individuals and one corporate group. Local reporter Jack Knox knows the AIQ bosses, but first, here's how it feels when a global story comes to town. Imagine being in Britain and being told that a Canadian election was swayed by a company in Torquay. That's, that's the analogy. We are a smallish provincial town at the edge, on the edge of the world. He explains that AIQ boss Jeff Sylvester, here pictured outside number 10 Downing Street, worked in Canada with Chris Wiley, the Cambridge Analytica whistleblower back in the day. Chris Wiley volunteered for the same member of parliament, Keith Martin, uh, who employed Jeff Sylvester. Oh, I see. That's you a see. connection between the two. Yeah. They set up a Canadian entity and that they, the, the legal name was Aggregate IQ. AIQ deny this. AIQ say they're 100% Canadian, say they've never had a contract with Cambridge Analytica and say they're not the de facto Canadian branch of either Cambridge Analytica or their parent company, SCL. But what of the relationship between AIQ and SCL? These documents show multiple links between Aggregate IQ and SCL elections. This unsigned one, dated September 2014, even has Cambridge Analytica's logo on it. Then this glossy document from March 2014. It outlines how AIQ will provide SCL with an engagement platform using SCL's modelling data. An SCL internal staff list from July 2014 lists AIQ President Zach Massingham as head of SCL Canada. Mr Massingham also signed this document in 2014, an intellectual property agreement by which AIQ licensed data to SCL. We wanted to put this directly to AIQ bosses and thought our chance had come. Just a few weeks ago, a member of staff tweeted a picture from inside their latest office in Victoria. We spent a pretty agonising day pounding the streets of Victoria, looking for those windows and that brickwork in that building. We finally found it. It's that one behind me. So that would mean that the view that you can see in the picture comes from that building. This is AIQ. But they've disappeared again. Uh, we did speak to their neighbours here and they saw people coming and going in the office up until about a week ago, but then the elusive AIQ go underground again. AIQ developed software and code used by SCL, the parent company of Cambridge Analytica, but there was also much more raw side to what they did. According to Chris Wiley's evidence in Parliament, AIQ helped distribute content during the last Nigerian election, supporting the incumbent then president, Goodluck Jonathan. The, the videos uh, that AIQ distributed in Nigeria with the, the, the sole intent of intimidating voters um, included content where people were being dismembered. Uh, there's uh, incredibly anti-Islamic uh, and threatening messages. AIQ say they refused to distribute the violent content they say SCL provided to them for use in Nigeria. Stuart Morse only worked for AIQ for a short while, but remembers the boss's rationale. The way that they put that to me was, uh, OK, so we're working for Good Luck Jonathan in Nigeria. Good luck, Jonathan, not a nice guy. But when you see the competition, Boko Haram, uh, you know, that's just the nature of the... Is, the is, that, is that how they explained it in the office? Yeah. Good luck, Jonathan, of course, lost. Which brings us to the question, did any of this actually sway voters? Who knows? It did achieve one thing, confirmed one man's notion that democracy is dysfunctional. One man back at Kawashan Bay, British Columbia. We told Jim Wallace who'd brought us out on his boat while we were here. He'd heard about the Canadian connection, but was not surprised. I haven't seen a democracy anywhere in my lifetime, so I don't know really? about democracy. I, we certainly don't live in one. 
He went on to speak of conspiracy theories, of losing control, of dark forces undermining democracy. And for a while at least, one couldn't help but ask, who could blame him? Barack Obama in Canada. In a statement tonight, the company told us, aggregate IQ works in full compliance within all legal and regulatory requirements in all jurisdictions where it operates. Aggregate IQ does not undermine democracy by employing harmful, unethical techniques. It has never knowingly been involved in any illegal activity. Chris Wiley has never been employed by Aggregate IQ. Aggregate IQ has never been and is not part of Cambridge Analytica or SCL. All work Aggregate IQ does for each client is kept separate from every other client. 